In today's What Sold video, we are gonna be talking about a week's worth of sales starting with August 21st through the 27th. Now, in this particular week, it was so hot. I think the heat index hit like 107 or something like that. It was so hot that they actually canceled school for a day. My district was out and so was the district that my kids attend. And yet, in this particular week of sales, regardless of the heat wave, I sold things like winter boots, I sold things like corduroy jackets. Fall and winter attire is selling people. Get it listed. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller and like I alluded to in my intro, when I'm not reselling, I am teaching high school choir full-time. I'm also a mom of two kids, I'm married, I've got a busy church life, you know, there's a lot of things going on. And on my channel, I like to share about the reselling side of my life. In the few hours that I have to spare throughout the week, what it is that I do in order to make a great side income for my family so that we can do things like travel and, you know, help support our parents and things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of content, especially learning how to resell from a part-time reseller's perspective, then definitely make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button as well. It is a weekly video series that I put out so that I can keep everyone up to date as to what has been selling well for me. So this was actually a pretty great week. And I think a lot of that is because of the fact that I am able to list and sell cold weather pieces. And in general, cold weather pieces just go for more than like summery tank tops or like little bathing suit bottoms or something. You know what I mean? Like there's just more fabric. <laughs> Things are made of like wool. Um, it's just more substantial, I feel like, when we're talking about fall attire compared to spring and summer attire. And therefore, I generally find that those pieces tend to sell for more. And then not only that, but I feel like people are just like used to spending more money during this season of the year because, you know, people are used to back to school shopping or they start preparing for buying gifts for the holidays and stuff. So I think we're looking at a pretty busy shopping season coming up and in order to be ready for it in order to be ready for all those shoppers that want to spend their money just make sure that you are listing a great things and I would advise that you list fall and winter attire so let's jump right into what did end up selling for me I'm also going to share about a brand new selling experience that I had this week. Um, so that'll be coming up. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And just kind of what like my thoughts are on that moving forward. But let's start with Monday, which was August 21st. On Poshmark, I the sale was bittersweet. So I sold this pair of Dr. Martin's black leather Mary Jane leather shoes in a size youth three. I did put the word Wednesday Adams in the listing title because they had for real Wednesday Adams vibes. Um, these sold for $34. I had picked them up at a local consignment store during their birthday sale and my average cost of goods for everything that I bought that day was $4.55. I made a net profit of $22.65 on those shoes, which I was really happy with. But this was a bittersweet sale because I went back and forth so many times as to whether or not I wanted to keep them. Also the other day, my daughter and I, she's 10 years old. We put our feet up against each other's and her feet are officially the same size as mine, which isn't hard because I wear like a children's two or um, like a women's four. So it's not like it was going to be difficult for her to reach my foot size. But I also was like wondering if she would want to wear these, but she is, she's like really into fashion and stuff, but she is so particular about what goes on her feet. First and foremost, they have to be comfortable. And even though Doc Martens are known for being comfortable, I think that these would have been too heavy, too bulky for her. So I just went ahead and listed them, even though I wanted to wear them, I wanted to save them for my daughter. I was like, they just, they got to go. They got to go to someone who will actually like wear them often. And so I'm happy that they moved. They sold pretty quickly, probably within two to three weeks of being listed. And I am, you know, $22.65 richer. The next sale I was very thankful for and kind of surprised by. So it was this pair of Bruno Mogli beige leather cap toe heels or like pumps. They were in a seven and a half double A, so very narrow. They were made in Italy. I went to a Goodwill in a town about an hour, hour and a half away 
I was there in January. I go every January to this town if I have any students that make all-state choir. So there have been years that I haven't had any students make all-state choir, but this past January, I did have two students who qualified. They're amazing. They're like amazing singers. But um, while they're in rehearsal for like nine hours a day, I, I don't go to rehearsal with them. I'm not gonna sing. So I go thrifting and I go hard. And I went to this one Goodwill. They had a lot of great shoes. And this pair I like went back and forth on. Do I need to get them? Is it worth it? Comps were all over the place, but I was like, I'll just try because I'd never tried selling anything by this brand. They sold for $29.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I picked them up for $5.99 at that Goodwill. So I made a profit of $19. I don't know that I need to pick this brand up anymore, especially if the shoes are in a narrow size. Narrow shoes are just honestly a pretty hard sell. Um, I know I always harp on this channel about how I think it's unfair when resellers are like, I don't pick up anything in a size zero or a two and I don't pick up anything in petite sizing. Basically, you don't pick up clothing for me, which is fine. You do what you want to do. It's your business. Um, I try to be inclusive of all sizes, whether it's like the extremely small or plus size. Man, with shoes though, it's, they, I mean, when they are narrow, like double A or triple A, those shoes sit for way longer than any of my size zero or any of my petite stuff. So that is a pretty hard sell. It's gotta be a pretty remarkable, extraordinary pair of shoes, I think, for me to pick them up if they're gonna be that narrow of a width. So we'll see how that works moving forward. On Tuesday, which was August 22nd, I only had Poshmark sales. And the first one was a pair of winter boots. It was this pair of new without the tags, Columbia Powder Bug Plus Two, that was the style name, snow boots in a youth size seven. So these I picked up in that same town, but at a different Goodwill for $9.99. They sold for 30. I made a net profit of $14.01. It wasn't a lot, but you know, I picked these up last January, hoping that they would sell before uh, the winter was over. They didn't. And I knew in my heart of hearts that they probably wouldn't because at that time people are already kind of shopping for spring. Um, but I'm so happy that they sold so early before even a hint of winter. So that's nice to get those out of my house because they're big and bulky. The next thing to sell was this pair of new with tags, 5.11 tactical meridian pants, straight fit pants in a size 30 by 30. They were in the color field green. I picked these up at that local consignment store during their birthday sale for $4.55. I actually got two pairs of these pants just in different colors. Actually, no, like two pairs of 5.11 tactical pants, but different styles, I guess. So um, the other ones are black, I believe, but they're in the same size, both new with tags, most likely from the same person. The, this pair sold for $50 and I made a net profit of $35.45. So while I feel like the amount that 5.11 Tactical goes for these days is less than it was a few years ago, it still does pretty decently. Um, I think that what a lot of you were saying in the comment section of that haul video from that birthday sale was that 5.11 Tactical is like tactical gear, stuff that like maybe police officers or, um, you know, people who are doing that kind of work, that kind of activity, um, this is great attire for them. Um, so I, I didn't really know that, even though it's right in the name of the brand. So whenever you guys share like information or advice with me in the comments, first of all, I want you to know that I am always so grateful for it. Like I think some people are scared to correct YouTubers or scared to offer advice because they think that YouTubers are an authority on everything just because they're on you know someone's phone or someone's TV screen, but there are a lot of things that I don't know, and there are a lot of things that you guys know way more about than I do. I just happen to like talk incessantly about the topic, and therefore people think that I know more than everyone else. I absolutely do not. So if ever I'm talking about anything and you know something about that subject matter, oh my goodness, I appreciate every comment that is left on any and all of the things. So thank you for educating me and teaching me. I appreciate it all the time. The next thing to sell was a meh sale. It was this Civil War Captain America Super Soldier full zip hoodie in a youth size 3T. So why did I list this? I don't know. It was in my house and I was like, I guess I gotta 
Gera. So it sold for $8. I have a dollar and two cents into this from a reseller buyout. It was something that I got like three years ago from someone who didn't want to resell anymore. So my net profit was $4 and two cents. I should have just taken it to a local children's consignment store, but that wasn't something that I was doing back then. Um, now, if I come across children's stuff, if people give me things, if there's children's clothes in a reseller buyout or something, I generally just take it to that consignment store. If it's something amazing, I might list it, but it's hard to find children's stuff that will sell for decent profit, for the kind of profit that makes it worth listing. On Wednesday, which was August 23rd, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Signature 8 black bleach distress studded cutoff denim shorts in a size small. This was something that I got for free from my sister-in-law's cousin. So she just like had all this clothes. Some of it was great. Some of it was by brands like Adriana Goldschmied or Rag and Bone, but a lot of it was just like cheaper going out clubbing type stuff. Um, this was just like a random pair of jeans, shorts. They sold for $17 with this kind of shipping because of Pasha VA. And so I made a net profit of $11.58. I didn't have anything into it because she just gave us that stuff for free. On eBay, this was a pretty great sale. So it was this vintage hand knit by Barrick Wool Winter Snowman Cardigan Sweater in a size extra large. This was just so darling. And I feel like you don't see construction like this anymore in modern pieces. People don't put the same amount of care and energy into making garments like this anymore. Like this is just such a one of a kind piece. I was so excited to get it. Um, and it was something that my mother-in-law just had laying around the house. I don't know if someone gave it to her. I don't know if it's something that she, I, this is not the kind of thing that she would wear. She's a very like chic, pretty stylish woman. She, I don't think was wearing stuff like this, but it was in her house. She gave it to me. It sold for $60 and I made a net profit of $53 and 10 cents. This is another like wintry item that sold. And it's so funny because the thing right before it was a pair of jean shorts. So it's that weird transitional season where maybe some people are still like, okay, I just need like one more pair of shorts to get me through the end of this season. But a lot of people are already thinking about the seasons ahead. The next thing to sell was this blue corduroy star print button up maxi jumper dress in a size large. This sold for $14.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. It was promoted at 3%. I got it for $3.50 at this weird uh, thrift store in my area. This thrift store lasted for about, I want to say like half a year, maybe less than that. It, it's a cool concept, but it was this idea of like very cyclical fashion where it was like you bring stuff, you get points, you use points to pick out new stuff that other people had brought into this thrift store and you pay like a service fee per item. So basically each item is like $3 and 50 cents or something like that. It was a very interesting concept, but I think it was like overly complicated and not very many people knew about it. So there wasn't much to choose from, but I went once and I got a few pieces. This was when, do you remember like a couple years ago when everyone was like all about star prints? Everyone was like, if you find anything with a star print on it, you have to get it. It's going to sell so fast. And that's why I got this. And then I sat on it for two years. So, but also like, why did I pick this up? There's no brand. There's no size tag. I think someone made this during home ec, but I just thought it was kind of cute. So here we are. And I made a net profit of $9 and 55 cents. And then on Thursday, which was August 24th, I didn't sell anything, but I had my first Poshmark Live sale. This is the new thing that I tried. Um, very much kind of giving into peer pressure from a lot of you, a lot of people who are like, just try it, just see what happens. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And that was one of my resolutions coming out of FlipCon. I was like, you know what? I need to give live selling another chance. I just, I think where I'm stuck is trying to figure out like what to bring to the table when it comes to live selling. I'm very hesitant to bring my best stuff. And so to be honest with that first show, it was stuff that like I was gonna bring to Play-Dohs anyway, or some of it was stuff that like it was decent and I was gonna list it, but I hadn't yet. Um, but it was stuff that was like, you know, maybe gonna sell for like 20, $25. Like, I was not trying to, especially with my first Poshmark Live sale, I wasn't going to list like the best things that I had because I'm just too scared that things are going to go for far less than I could get 
for them if I were to list them regularly. So that's kind of the constant struggle. I keep looking over here because I have a rack with clothes on it that I am planning on using for future um, like Poshmark Live or maybe even whatnot shows. I don't know. Like I wanted to give whatnot another chance to. So it's... I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on live selling. If you are a buyer, if you sit through Poshmark lives or whatnot shows, what are you looking for? Are you looking to buy stuff for yourself and just get like a really good deal on it? Are you looking to source for your reselling business? Like what kind of stuff do you want? And I think that's where I'm just so stuck. And that's why I'm like, I just don't know if it's worth my time, but I did a show. I think I had like 40 things in the tray of the show. I sold 16 of those items and I made a gross sales amount of $152. I had $28.60 into those items. So my net profit was $93 for like, I think I was live for like an hour and a half. Like it's not horrible, but I don't know. And like some of those items did sell for less than if I had listed them, which, you know, is to be expected. You're not putting in the time of like for real photographing them. You're not listing them for real. So yeah, it should be less take home because you're doing less work. It's just hard for me to reconcile with that. So I don't know. I'm still very much like trying to figure out a system that works for me and something that I'm comfortable with. I will have a video coming out soon. I need to film it, but I will have a video coming out explaining why I want to get back into live selling a little bit and what that money is going to be earmarked for. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you want to make sure that you know when that video comes out. So yeah, I just kind of dipped my toes into it. First Poshmark live show. If you were there, thank you so much. Thanks for being there and keeping me company. And like, it was a good time. I had a really good time with everyone who was there. I just like, don't feel like I know what I'm doing. So I don't know. I will do it again. Like I said, I've got a rack of stuff. I, I'm kind of like trying to categorize these shows by some sort of theme. So I have stuff that's kind of like lounge slash athletic wear themed. And then I have just bottoms. Like I have a bunch of jeans. I have some just kind of like casual pants, like lots of bottoms. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do a show with just bags. Like I have a bin of bags over here. There's a lot of things that I can do, but let me know like as a shopper, what is it that you like to see in live shows? And as a buyer, if you have a lot of success with live shows, please leave me like your top tip. I would love to learn from you. Moving on to Friday, however, which was August 25th, on Poshmark, I sold this Talbot's striped cargo pair of linen blend pull on cropped capri pants in a size 10 petite. These I actually, believe it or not, sourced on whatnot, like maybe a year and a half ago, a year ago, um, I had $7 and 71 cents into them. That was including shipping because nobody on whatnot is bidding on Talbots, which is why I did. They sold for $25. I made a net profit of $12 and 29 cents on eBay. I sold this new with tags, J crew factory, blue floral poplin raglan tiered mini dress in a size medium. This actually sold for $32. This is something that I got from a coworker of mine who is doing a consignment deal with me. So I am listing and selling her clothes for her and anything that brings in a $25 profit after fees and shipping. Um, I am giving her 50% of the net profit. Otherwise, if it comes in lower than that, then I'm giving her 40%. So this came out to a net profit of $28 and 13 cents. So I gave her half, which was 1407 and I kept half, which was 1407. And I was surprised because Generally, I have a hard time moving J. Crew and especially J. Crew Factory, um, but that one sold pretty fast. Like, I think it was only listed for two weeks. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. This was a great sale. It was this Burberry Brit blue check button up shirt in a size extra small. It was very preppy, very classic. I contemplated keeping it for myself, but I just don't need anything like this in my life. So I'd rather make money off of it. It sold for $64. I had $4.55 into it from the local consignment store's birthday sale and my net profit was $50 and 55 cents. And then I had another good sale on Mercari and it was just these two Mercari sales for the week and that was it, but they were both really good ones. It was this Free People pink striped linen blend oversized blazer in a size large. It had pockets. I did get this a while ago at Plato's Closet for $7.50, but it finally sold for $42 and my net profit on that was $28.31. Man, Free People sells so slowly these days. Like it takes me forever 
ever to move a free people piece. So I used to pick up free people no matter what, because I feel like in my area, it wasn't really something that you could find very easily until maybe just like a couple years ago. So before that, if it was free people, it could be the crustiest piece of garbage that you'd ever seen. And I would pick it up because I was like, it says free people. <laughs> But like, I know better now and I know that even really good free people, it can sit because there's so much of it being resold on reselling markets. And so I've learned to be picky about my free people. On Saturday, which was August 26th, I sold on eBay this pair of Paige Lunnix, that was the style name, light wash, slim fit blue jeans in a size 38 for men. I got these at a Goodwill where my mother-in-law lives and I had $6.99 into them. It is amazing the number of lowball offers I've gotten on this pair of jeans. I think I only had them listed for like maybe $35 or something like that, but people would be like $10, $12. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, why are you the way that you are? I finally sold them for $27.99. I think I had dropped the price to $27.99 after months of these not selling. And I made a net profit of $15.84. And then I sold this Patagonia blue Bonda V-neck twist dress in a size medium. I I put the words like athleisure and moisture wicking in the listing title. It sold for $20 um, and it was promoted at 3%. I had a dollar and 11 cents into it from a local consignment store's birthday sale, but it was like the end of their birthday sale where the price that you pay per bag was much cheaper. And so my net profit was $14.68. Patagonia dresses don't typically sell for a ton, but they usually sell pretty quickly. And then on Sunday, which was August 27th, um, the first thing to sell was a pretty great Poshmark bundle. So the first thing to sell in this bundle was this pair of Fry Jennifer Pointed Toe Cognac Leather Side Zip Ankle Boots in a size six and a half. I had $12.99 into those, I believe from a local Goodwill. The next thing to sell was this Madewell pair of black 10 inch high rise skinny jeans with a raw hem in a size 30. I got those at a local consignment store for $4.50. And the last thing to sell in this bundle was this vintage upcycled Lee, that was the brand, high rise mom jeans. I mean, it didn't say mom jeans, but that was definitely the style because they were vintage. And they had more of like an acid wash in a size 32. Those I got in a thread up DIY denim rescue box three years ago, I want to say, for $3. And if I'm not mistaken, I think those had a hole like right under the butt cheek. <laughs> I, I don't know. If so, I will like accentuate that picture right here. But that one I had about $3 into. So the first two pieces, the fry boots and the Madewell jeans, I, you know, wanted to make a decent amount on, but those pair of Lee jeans I had had for so long, I was basically willing to give those away for free at this point. So I think what happened was someone liked all three items. I sent them an offer after bundling them together for her of $110 with this kind of shipping. I had $20.49 into those three items. So I made a net profit of $64.53, which doesn't seem like a ton for, you know, three pieces and one of them's like fry, one of them's made well. But if you kind of think about it as if those um, Lee jeans weren't even in the picture, because that's kind of how I was thinking about it, then, you know, it wasn't bad. The next thing to sell was this pair of Carhartt dungaree fit black flannel line jeans in a size 30 by 34. I got these at a garage sale from earlier in the summer. Um, they had a ton of men's pants on this table and everything was, I don't remember how much every pair of pants were, but it came out to like $1.50 per pair of pants. Um, these sold for $28 with this kind of shipping because of Pasha VA, which is a Chrome extension that I use that will send offers to likers five minutes after someone has liked an item. It'll share my Poshmark closet for me. It'll relist stale listings for me. It does a lot of things that I don't want to sit there and do. If you want to check it out, if you want to like automate some of your Poshmark tasks, um, I highly recommend it. I do have a coupon code and you can save 20% off your first payment if you try it. Um, and I'll leave that down in the description below. But because of Posture VA, I was able to make the sale and some net profit on those pants was $17.92, which I was pleasantly surprised and pleased with because Carhartt has been sitting. So to move those as quickly as I did, I felt good about that. The next sale, this is another one, just like those page jeans. I've gotten so 
many lowball offers. So it was by the brand Cinch, and it was this green button-up geometric print contrast cuff shirt for women in a size medium. I had never heard of this brand before, and I don't know, like when I was looking through the racks at this consignment store during one of their birthday sales, like way at the beginning of the summer, I definitely almost just like kept going, but then I stopped because it looked like, you know, quality construction, and I'd never seen the brand before, so I was like, let me just check it out. And I was pretty surprised by the comps. They were pretty decent, you know, consistently selling for like, I don't know, shirts selling for like $25, $35, $40, which, you know, like most shirts by regular brands just don't sell for that much. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this brand. And at first I thought it was a men's piece. I thought it was kind of like a Robert Graham type of brand because of the contrast cuff. However, upon closer inspection, it was a women's piece. So I, you know, purchased it because I knew my cost of goods was gonna be low. My cost of goods was $3.47 for that day because it was a monster like fill a bag sale. And when I filmed the haul, you guys all let me know in the comments that this was actually a really good brand. I think it's a little bit more popular in the South where, you know, like Western wear is really popular and stuff like that. So once I got it listed, it got so much attention and it got so many lowball offers. Again, people offering me like $10, $15. And I was like, the fact that I'm getting so many offers lets me know that this is a pretty good brand and that I should hold out for, you know, something higher. So I probably would have taken anything north of 25, but after a few months of getting really low ball offers, someone finally just bought it outright on Poshmark for $35 and I made a net profit of $24 and 53 cents. And the best thing is I think earlier that morning, someone had sent me a low ball offer and I think I had countered and then this sale came in. That just like feels the best, you know, you kind of imagine like the other person who sent him the offer being like, oh man, like I should have just bought it. Yeah, you should have. You should have been more reasonable with your offer sending. On eBay, I sold this J. Jill purple corduroy button jacket with a velvet cuff. It was in a size extra large and it was made of 100% cotton. I was so confused because the coworker that I'm doing a consignment deal with, she is really skinny. She's not very tall. She was like a basketball player in college, I want to say. Um, and most of the clothes that she gave me was like a size small or a size medium. She gave me four identical jackets from J. Jill, which that was weird too, because her general aesthetic is like very sporty, like lots of jeans, lots of like casual wear. So she does a lot of like Nike, like some Lululemon, um, a lot of like silver and like um, rock revival, like those kinds of jeans. So J. Jill, that was surprising to me to see four identical J. Jill jackets, like corduroy jackets, but just all in different colors. And they were all either extra large or one X. So I was so confused, but I was like, these are gonna sell. So I listed them all. And I think three out of the four of them have sold already. There's just like one left hanging out with me. This was the first jacket to sell. It was again, the purple one. This one sold for $31.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. It was promoted at 3%. Um, it did make me a net profit of $25.90. And so she made a net profit of $12.95 and I made a profit of $12.95. The next thing to sell was this Vervet Distressed Paper Bag Blue Denim Mini Skirt in a Size Small. So these next two items are auction items. You guys know that I've been taking really, really, really old or just overall crappy listings and just putting them out to auction on eBay just so I can get them out, hopefully get some good feedback on those items. Um, but that sold for $3.99. I had $3 into it from Play-Doh's. Why did I pick this up at a Play-Doh's closet? Like, what was I thinking? But I lost a quarter. The next thing that I lost money on was this pair of Under Armour leggings. They were black with like a blue tuxedo stripe down the side, I think. That was red flag number one. Like why do, like why does a pair of leggings have a tuxedo stripe? I don't know. But these got the one bit of a dollar and 99 cents. I had $3 into these from a thread up 
mixed women's rescue box, whatever you want to call it. So I lost $1.55. On my website, which is shopbeckypark.com, I sold this Anthropology Maeve Folk Art Kimono Sleeve Floral 100% Silk Blouse in a size zero. I sold that to a viewer named Dallas. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. If I'm not, I apologize. But I had sent a coupon in my newsletter and Dallas used it to get this for $18.72. That's with me paying for shipping. And that was actually something that I believe I purchased from either Jack or Ryan from the Jack Valentine YouTube channel. Um, I purchased it to wear and I did wear it once or twice. I just didn't reach for it very often. And so I ended up listing it and I made a net profit of $14.07. So Dallas, thank you so much. I hope you love it. I hope you get a lot more wear out of it than I did. I think I'm just too scared to wear silk. Like I know I'm going to mess it up and I'm just going to be mad at myself. So rather than messing up just like basically a piece of art, I'd rather pass it along to someone who is going to be able to wear it responsibly. And then the last thing that sold on my website was this pair of new with tags, Zara white and blue embroidered high rise scallop hem shorts in a size medium. These sold for $27 and 95 cents. I had $3 into them from Plato's Closet from a sale that they were having. And so I made a net profit on those of $19 and 24 cents. And I did hold on to those for probably like half a year, but it's okay. I'm happy that they finally sold and that I didn't have to take them into fall and winter with me because then most likely I would have been holding on to them until next spring at the earliest. So let's talk about my numbers for the week. On Poshmark, I sold 27 items. That's if you include the Poshmark live sale. Um, and that was for a gross sales amount of $489. Once you factor in fees and any shipping discounts that I offered, that total drops to $387.87. I had $81.88 into those items. And so my net profit was $305.99. On eBay, I sold nine items for a gross sales amount of $222.67. After fees and any shipping that I had to cover, that total drops to $188. My cost of goods for those nine items was $50.61, and so my net profit for the week was $137.39. On Mercari, I sold two items for a gross sales amount of $106. My Mercari sales were pretty great. Um, once you factor in Mercari's fees, that total drops to $90.91. I had $12.05 into those two items, and so my net profit for the week was $78.86. On Shopify, I also sold two items for a gross sales amount of $46 dollars and 67 cents. I paid for shipping and there are very minimal fees on Shopify. So after all of that, my total dropped to $36 and 31 cents. I only had $3 into those two items. And so my net profit was $33 and 31 cents. So in total, I sold 40 items for a gross sales amount of $864.34. That total drops to $703.09 after fees and shipping. I had $147.54 into those items. So my net profit for the week was $555.55, which I am so happy with. I am totally cool with that. And the hope is that those numbers will only continue to go up. And I don't know about you. I think this is just human nature, but I feel like when you're doing well in something, you want to put more into it. Like as sales are improving, I want to list more. I want to source more. Like I want to do more for my business because it's doing more for me. And the hope is that the two continue to feed each other. Like the business feeds my desire to do more and me doing more continues to feed my business. And that just keeps growing and growing and growing. So we'll see what happens. If you want to know what happens, I guess you got to subscribe and you got to watch upcoming what's old videos. Like that's, that's the takeaway here, I guess. But for real, Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. I know you could be spending this time doing a lot of other things and instead you are hanging out with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope that the transition into fall is wonderful and beautiful for all of you. Stay safe, make good choices, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.